Hey, hey everyone, here we are ready for another exciting kiln opening. This one is one that I could hardly sleep because I couldn't wait to see what was in this kiln. It is the brand new Amico Brent glazes, the Potter's Choice glazes. You can't even buy them in the stores yet, but Amico sent me some and I'm going to share those with you. I also have a bunch of the Mako 2020 stoneware kit glazes in here too. Now those you can buy, uh, but you know, they're limited. But the Amico Brent, you can't get them anywhere at all. And I have five, five glaze tests using those. A whole bunch of Mako colors glaze tests too. Some pieces using Sambao uh, under glaze decals and some hand carved mugs that I've been working on. So without further ado, let's get started and unload this kiln. So I fired this kiln, let's see, I started it Friday night at about 7 p.m. It ran a two hour preheat cone five firing with a 10 minute hold on the end. So it got to 2124. And you might think that's not hot enough for a cone five firing, but I have a 40 degree cone offset. So that means it got to 2164 actually, and 2167 is cone five. So it is three degrees shy of the target of cone five as far as the temperature digital reading. But as you know, we really don't know until we look at the cone packs because we measure heat work, which is what your glazes really need to melt. So let me get everybody set up here. And turn this a little bit more. Everybody hang tight for a sec. I've got to do a little adjustment. These are recorded live, so um, you, you know, you never know what's going to happen. There we go. All right, let's open this kiln. Now I did, I did peek. I did. I looked at this top layer. I couldn't help myself. How about I unlock it? I locked it back up. <laughs> like, like the pots, like the pots are going to get out. They're not. Okay. Uh, so this is the top layer, and I've already peeked on <laughs> So I've already looked at everything, and that's, that's the only layer I've looked. So first piece out is the one that everybody has been dying to see right here. This is a hand-built plate using a slab of clay, GR Pottery Forms, and Sandbau Studios underglaze decals. So this is one of their underglaze decals and then red speedball underglaze on the rim. So that's what I have there. And the back has a double foot. And I got a couple messages about my double foot. Uh, people want to know why I use a double foot. And here's the thing. When you're making larger plates that have a long distance to span, you could get slumping. So they could slump and you get a little kind of depression. And we don't want depressed plates. So I put the little teeny tiny circle in the middle there and that'll keep it from slumping. So no worries, right here. I know, this decal, and I have a little story about this decal I wanna share with everybody. My mother sent me a message, and she said, oh my goodness, that pattern. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's a nice pattern. She said, no, when I was a child, I remember standing in your great-grandmother's kitchen, and she had an apron with this pattern. So this pattern, my, my great-gram, who I knew, she passed away when I was 16. So I got the pleasure of spending a little bit of time with her. Not all of us get to spend time with our great grandparents, but she was an amazing woman. She um, was born in 1908. So, you know, she's lived through a lot. She had a lot of stories to share and I was thankful I got to spend some time with her and hear those stories. But this pattern, my great gram had an apron with this pattern on it. So how fabulous is that, right? It has a story. There's a lovely story to it. So this, I think I'll be keeping this one, um, but I'm gonna make a bunch more. I gotta order more decals though. <laughs> How fabulous, right? So it's a nice little story to go along with that plate. Uh, should we jump right in? Should we jump right in to the tests? Let's jump right into the tests. Right here. This, this one, this is the brand new Blue Spark. I'm just was moving it around so y'all can see it from Amico Brent. Now you cannot buy this glaze yet. You can pre-order them from some companies. Clayscapes Pottery is letting you pre-order. I don't, I don't know if you can really appreciate those crystals. It is beautiful. So it's Blue Spark on the entire thing, three coats. Then I used June Bug on the rim and it, it ran a little bit down the back. So you can see that. Look how cute this is. 
So that's that blue spark. If you want a blue dish that is a gorgeous deep indigo blue with some crystals, uh, I think you might have found it. It's brighter in person. I don't think the lights are really showing it off. It's great. I'm super happy. Nice melt. You know, a lot of texture already in this glaze, so you don't need to add texture to it. So this is a winner right here. That's the blue spark. Wow. Okay. And then there's a test tile. I ran, I ran out of my porcelain test tiles. I got to make some more. This is the PC70, which is Amico's new flambe glaze. So it's this crazy good purple. And it has a little bit of uh, crystallization going on there. And I have got some pieces with this, bigger pieces. We'll get to those in a minute. They're on the next shelf, so we got to wait. Uh, might as well do the cone pack now. Let's talk about this. So, I was telling you about my firing schedule and telling you about what temperature it got to. This is cone four, this is cone five, this is cone six. As you can see, cone five melted completely, 100%. That's a solid cone five firing. Six is a little soft, so it, it, it went perfect. Four is completely melted. So what I will do now, grab my Sharpie out of my pocket, is I will write today's date. So that's uh, 329, right? It's 29th? Do we all know what day it is? And this is the top. So now I have that record, and I will keep it, and we'll compare it to the bottom, and we'll see how even they are. But that's perfect. So if we look at the glaze melt, we know our kiln got to the temperature it needed to, had the heat work it needed to have, to get to what we want for our cone five glazes and clay. All right, put my Sharpie back over there. Let's continue on. This is one of the new GR Pottery Forms templates. So I used one of their new template forms to make this. I think this is the Daisy. I'm not 100% sure, but if you look at the photos of the template forms, you'll see, right? You'll see what it is. And the glaze, well, the texture is my Moroccan tile texture. So that's this here. And it has Tangelo, two coats on the back, one coat just here, two coats here, and on the inside, Tangelo on the entire thing, one coat, then three coats just here in the center, and two coats of Poppy on the rim. So I used the Poppy only on the rim, but it has a coat of Tangelo underneath to help blend it through. So you get this beautiful two-tone finish and I had no slumping. So I just want to show the bottom because I know some people were concerned about slumping with that new template form. No slumping at all. So fabulous. And the clay, Laguna B Mix. Ha, that's this clay right here. It looks good. I'm very happy with it. So another, another winner from the kiln. So far, if everything else failed, I'd be completely happy. All right, now let's get into our first um, this was a glaze test right here, and I got my notebook. Had to have the notebook because there's so much information going on. And I see a question, do I put sand or anything under my plates when firing? Not for these, not when it has a nice foot ring. If it was a very large piece with a flat bottom like a casserole dish, I would use sand under it. Actually, I use fine grog or medium grog. You could use some alumina hydrate as well. Either or, it just provides a, a little surface for everything to move as it expands so it doesn't crack. Okay, let's talk about this. We got our, we got our notebook, right? We, we've got to have our notebook because if not, we don't know what we did. I mean, you think you know, but you won't remember. I don't remember. So, glaze firing. This piece was the last mug I glazed because it's on the top. So I know it's mug number six that I tested. I used Mako stoneware glazes on the entire thing. This is their bright, br bright blue gloss inside, inside, and out. And then I did, on top of that, three layers of Norse blue. And then on top of that, I did one layer of Muddy Waters. So that's one of their brand new glazes. And you can actually really, really see how one layer of the muddy waters wasn't enough. I was worried it would run and stick, so I didn't really push it. I should have done two to three layers 
because I was only keeping out the top. But I've never used Mako glazes before. I wasn't sure how they would turn out, but it's pretty good. Got a few crystals that fell down on the inside. I kind of let them stay there too. It's a nice mug. It'll, it'll do. It'll, it'll do for sure. So that's a good one. And that was a combo that I just decided to try out. I, I just thought, oh, that might look cool. So I was just playing with the glaze. And it does look cool. We'll put it right there. All right, we have a couple of my carved mugs. These I've been working on for a few months. You know, I carved them, they've been drying. I finally got around to doing the hand coloring on them. And they are Wheel Throne with Laguna B Mix. Then I apply wax, I carve my design. So let's see. And then I do an inlay with black underglaze. How sweet are these? And then after it's been bisque fired, I hand color it with speedball underglaze. You could use any underglaze you want. And I water it down so it's more like watercolor. Oh, look how sweet those are. Oh my gosh, they're so cute. And then I put a clear glaze on top. The inside is my chun blue, but a very light layer. I wanted these to be really soft. I didn't want them to have a strong chun blue color. My, my chun can go a brighter blue if you apply it thicker. And I went a little thinner. So here is another one, a little different pattern. This is more like roses and um, some little daisies and such. This was just some springtime flowers. So a couple of mugs. There are um, 15 of these carved mugs in here. I didn't, I didn't have room for all of them to fit. So, and I will be putting those up. Those mugs, because they have so much work, they usually go 95 dollars as are my carved mugs. I see people asking how much they sell for and honestly I cannot make enough. As soon as I make them they sell in a heartbeat. So those are supposed to be saved for my exhibition at Clayscapes Pottery in May but I might release a few. I've had a few requests so I might re release a few to people because you all ask and I want you to be able to get them. All right I see some <laughs> did I, did I uh, tell y'all that I, I think I'm going to have to be doing some grinding of pots and shelves? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's looking that way from what I'm seeing right now. I don't know if you all are seeing. <laughs> but it's going to be, whoa, that's gorgeous there. <laughs> and more carved pieces down there. Okay. We're just going to do this shelf to start with. And we'll start with the one that didn't run. How about we do that? This right here is Mako Raspberry Mist, three coats on the outside, and I believe I did do a coat on the inside too, but the rest of it is sandstone, three coats of sandstone on the inside. That's very pretty, and I think I could have gone heavier with the sandstone on the outside. That raspberry mist is a sweet, look at this right there. So yummy. Nice on the inside. The sandstone is more of a matte glaze. Uh, not my first choice for the inside of a bowl, but I knew it might run and I, I wanted to take care. So look at that. Came out nice. It looks like cork, right? Like a cork bowl. Um, it's pretty awesome. I'm happy with that one. That was fun. I had never used that glaze before. Ah, oh, got a couple more carved mugs. There's going to be a lot of these. You're all going to be like, yeah, that's enough. If you're looking for a nice pink glaze, you check out that pink glaze from Mako. It's called Raspberry Mist. So light celadon bluish green on the inside. Cute little carved flowers that are hand colored on the outside. Just little sweeties, right? Just a bunch of sweet little mugs. These are perfect for if you drink like a cappuccino or coffee or tea or cocoa. Um, I guess we'll do the ones that ran. Oh yeah, that's stuck on my shelf. Well, a bit of it stuck behind. I took a little bowl with, of the bowl with it. Okay, so can you tell the difference between these glazes? Because they are two different glazes, believe it or not. So. These are the brand new Amico Copper Red Glazes. And the really cool thing about them is the fact that they create a reduction atmosphere 
that is isolated to where the glaze is. So they actually create their own individual reduction atmosphere in an electric kiln. That's kind of crazy good if you think about it. Now, it did run. This was four coats. It, it was, um, Kara from Amico and I talked and she said, you gotta put it on like pudding and go heavy. Oh my gosh, the inside. I don't know if you can see how beautiful that is. So it ran. The, this one here is the flambe. This one here is the copper red. But honestly, they are so close to each other, I'm not really seeing a difference in the tones, I have to tell you. Between the two colors, though, I, I think the copper red is to die for. But don't put four coats on. Try three. <laughs> and maybe, maybe, um, only go one coat all the way to the bottom, and then the second coat two-thirds of the way down, the third coat one-third, because I did the whole thing four heavy coats. So I'll be grinding. They'll be fine. I will grind them down. I've done this many times before and it'll it'll be just you know a little more work but oh my gosh it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Now um, you want to see my kiln show? <laughs> like the real copper red, right? Exactly. It's like real copper red. So if you look you can see We've got the runny, runny, runnies. I'm gonna, it's a little hot, let's sit this here. So I've got some gloves in my pocket. <laughs> and put those on, just to protect my hands. All right, so you can see where it ran, and you can see where it stuck to my shelf, but I did use kiln wash, so if we just, if we just pop these back, look at that. I only have a space here and here that I have to worry about grinding. And then down here, look at these. So honestly, it's not that much work for grinding the shelves. That's it. Just a little bit. All right, so catch those. Oh, I got a handful of little glazy drips. You definitely want to wear gloves if you're going to touch glaze drips or shelves that have glaze stick to it. It will slice your hands. These, this is glass. These are little glass shards. They are very dangerous. So never, never, never grab that without gloves. You want to protect your hands always. All right, moving on to a shelf that looks to have no glaze drips, which I'm pleased with. <laughs> Happens, right? I fire to cone five. Yes. And that's that brand new Amico copper red glazes, the, the flambe and the copper red, they aren't out in production yet. These are test samples that I'm using. So you're just getting to see them for the first time. And again, here is that June bug from Amico. And it's not exactly what I thought it would look like. Let me get the blue spark and we'll look at them together. So you can compare, so you can compare notes with me, right? So I see Jamie wants to know if she needs to grind even the littlest specks. I would sand a little speck. You don't need to grind it. You should be able to sand it with a rub brick. And if you don't know what a rub brick is, this one is mine. I've been using it for about 15 years. You'll find it in the masonry department. And it's just called a rub brick. It even says that on the sticker. And you just use this and you just grind, grind, grind across the shelf. I actually have a class that explains it all on ClayShare if you want to know how to grind your shelves and clean your shelves. So I show how to clean them with the rub brick and I show how to clean them with a grinder, how to really get in there. All right, back to this right here. What do I use for kiln wash? I make my own kiln wash, 50% EPK, 50% alumina hydrate. Been doing it for decades. But you can buy kiln wash. Clayscapes has a fabulous one. If you don't want to mix it up yourself and have chemicals, just buy theirs. And I get cone wash rated to cone 10 because I have a cone 10 kiln. Sometimes I use one, sometimes I use the other. Okay, back to the Imico. We want to talk about these, right? This is Blue Spark. This is June Bug. And looking at them, the June Bug has a metallic sheen to it, not a lot of crystal growth, 
but still very pretty deep dark blue. Now, this one has microcrystalline, so it's a microcrystalline glaze, and it's beautiful. These are both food safe. Even with the crystals on it, they are food safe. From Amico, when you just use three coats of it as stated, and you're not really layering. So yes, Amico has them as food safe. They're, they're gorgeous. So this one, it's, it's a deep dark, like it almost looks like, like green leather, you know? It's beautiful. I'm very pleased. And actually, I've got to tell you, I, I think the June bug, it's on the rim with the blue spark. I love the June bug on the rim of the blue spark. You can't really see the, the blue spark on the rim of the one with June bug, can you? It sort of ate it, like absorbed it all the way. The June bug is a gloss, but it does have a little satiny to it. Yeah, it's a gloss. You can see gloss. It's not a super high gloss like a clear would be, but it definitely is. I wouldn't call it a satin. It's got a little too much shine. All right. I did a live broadcast quickly on Friday where I let you all pick the glaze and I did this plate. So I did the Autumn Foliage Interactive Pigment from Georgie's and I did the super clear gloss on top. Right, if you did a slow cool, a slower cool than I did, although my kiln cools very slow, you might get a tiny bit more crystalline growth, a little bit. Right, so you test that out if you want to do that. And we actually, do we have Drew's Slow Cool program? We have that, which we should post that on resources on clayshare.com. So if it's not there yet, it will be. We'll put it there. Look at this. Mm, nice, right? So pretty with the leaves. So that turned out nice. And that was just a little round plate I did as a demo. I don't know where. Somewhere right? Couple, couple more, couple more mugs. Okay, let's see what we got. I did because all any of us can ever do is do our best. And I will let everybody know on Instagram, yes, it's backwards, but it does say do your best. So it's my little do your best mug because every day, all I can ever do is hope to do my best. You know, it's all I can do. I, I work very hard and all I can say to myself at the end of each day is I did my best. And as long as I'm doing that, then I feel like I've accomplished something. You know, I, I can't do what someone else does. I can't be anybody else. I'm only me. And as long as I do my best, that's all I need to worry about, right? All I need to do is my own best. So I made this mug as a little reminder, do your best. Just that's it, everyone. Just do your best. And so this is another one that I did that's just a pretty carving, no, no text on that. And I only made, I think, two do your best mugs, one for me and maybe one for somebody else. But if you all want to do your best mug, we might make it happen. I could probably do that for you. A couple more, just sweet little, <laughs> there's a lot of these, sweet little springtime flower mugs. So we got that going. I'm just going to stack them all back here. There's going to be a lot of mugs at the end of this kiln opening. A lot of mugs. Here's another do your best. So this one's got a little bit different colors than the other one. And then this sweet little one. Played with the handle positioning a little bit on this. You got to do your best, right, everyone? That's all we all can do just our own best. All right, another, another couple of shelves. Oh my gosh, there's more carved mugs. They just keep coming. There was a lot in here. Now these are the cappuccino ones. So these are for like a latte. And I have one that, oh, oh, do we have any drips? Those are the Mako tests. Oh my gosh. Hold on a minute. You're not gonna. <laughs> Whoa, it's good in there. I'm just saying. Kevin switched. <laughs> Look, we switched the camera so you could see. <laughs> Look at that. Look in there. I got my notes right there too for you to see, but 
Look how good that is. These are all the tests. That's that night moth. Holy cow. Okay, okay, okay. We're going to switch. All right, back, back to regular. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so this, another carved one right here. This is the um, cappuccino shape, you know, more for like a latte because it's a little wider rim or if a cocoa, something you want to sip slowly and savor. And Kathleen wants to know on my leaf plate, is that super clear? It is. This is the one, this mug here is the one that the ladybug was crawling on. And I told you all I would share the story. So my gram, um, most of us, you know, our grandparents are truly beloved. My gram lived in the next town over when I was growing up. I had my own bedroom at my grandmother's house. I would get out of school on Friday afternoon. I would pack my suitcase as a little girl, and I would sit on my front steps on my suitcase waiting for my grandmother to come get me. And she did. She came and picked me up. And then I stayed with her every weekend until the day she passed. And I, my grandmother was like my second mom. And we were very, very close. I loved her dearly and she loved ladybugs. I mean, she absolutely loved ladybugs. They were her favorite thing. She collected ladybug canisters. She had ladybugs on her little shirts. She just adored ladybugs. So whenever I see a ladybug in my studio now, and she passed away, surprise, you know, she was only 56 when she passed, and she, it was very sudden, it was a heart attack, and I was only 18. So for me, um, it was a huge loss. I, it, was, it was devastating. And, I always think of her, and when I see a ladybug in the studio, it's like, it's like her, she's watching over me, like she's here with me. And, you know, um, I don't want to get all emotional and stuff, but this is life. We, we live this, we have these experiences. We have people who mean so much to us that we lose them and we don't think we can go on. You know, for me, I didn't know if I could go forward in life. And I did, though. I did keep going. I was at a high school. I was in my first year of college and I actually had to stop classes for a bit because I couldn't go on, but I went back eventually. You know, I was able to pull myself out of it, but at that moment you don't think you can. And so now all these years later, I still feel the loss of her, but I smile when I see ladybugs. They fill me with happiness and joy because she's with me now, you know? And so I know she's watching over me. And many of you know my grandmother introduced me to ceramics. So um, for me, it's even more special that this is my life and knowing that she's the reason why I do it. So I'm keeping this one because this is the one the ladybug was on. And it just, it means so much. So this one I'm going to put over here because it's going in the house and I'll be having something out of that later so I can spend time with her. So. Yeah, I see we all, we all have these the people in our lives that we've lost that there's a, uh, you know, we see something and it's their, their angel looking over us, right? We know that they're there watching us and um, looking out for us and bringing us luck and, you know, helping us through these difficult times. So back, back to pottery. But, you know, it's not always all about pottery. We, we are humans and we have lives and we share these experiences and this is, this is part of it. A couple more, very similar to the others. I'm not going to come over there with them. And then this one, because we've got a ton of, oh, that's a nice shape too. We've got a ton of the Mako to get through. So I want to get through those. Okay, pull this out. Oh my gosh! Okay, wow. So if you haven't tried the new Mako stoneware glazes yet, they are crazy good. There's a lot of crystals. I'm seeing a lot of crystals in here. Um, I'm seeing a lot of melting and running, but it doesn't look like anything stuck to the shelf. And I have to say, the muddy waters? Oh, goodness. Okay, where shall we start? Um, should we start with the bowls? Let's do this bowl first. Let's do this bowl first. I'm going to bring it over to the camera so you all can see it. It didn't stick. Oh my gosh. This right here, this bowl, this wide rimmed bowl. Let's check our notes, but I'm pretty positive. This is just muddy waters. That's all. 
That is all that is on this. I, Kevin is just over there in the corner, like clapping his hands. Look at the crystalline structure we're getting. It's a nice run. <gasps> Look at the blue. Look at the blue crystals. Oh, oh, we love it. Ooh, it's beautiful. Just one glaze does this. Just one. Can I show the bottom? Well, the, so my signature is different depending on what's happening. For a finished piece like a carved mug, I will inlay it like this. But for something that's going to be a glazed test like this, I just quickly scribble it on with pen. Well, it's actually under glaze in a little bottle. But that's what this is. So this is a glazed test piece. If it was a piece that I'd be putting out for sale, I would actually have carved it more like this. And, but I keep a bunch of these on hand to do glaze tests. That way, if it's ruined, uh, you know, I don't worry about it. Now, sometimes I'll still sell a piece even though it was a glaze test because there's nothing wrong with this bowl. There's absolutely nothing wrong. Actually, I think there's everything right. This was three coats of muddy waters inside and out. I will tell you that I did one coat top to here. I left a good quarter inch unglazed. Do you see that? In case we had any dripping. Then my next coat, I only came down to about here. So I would say I came down a little over two thirds. And then the last one was about half. So the muddy waters is food safe. They're different than traditional crystalline glazes. These, one, these here, um, it's more of a micro crystalline structure. All glazes have silica in it and things that help form crystals. And this right here, it's just a mix of different inclusions that they've put those little crystals in. So when it's a micro crystalline structure, it's different than if it was a true crystalline glaze. So this is food safe. Mako has it on their packaging. So this one right here, winner, beautiful, muddy waters. Okay. Uh, that, that was interesting. I did Desert Dusk by itself, and I did a coat of the ox blood on the outside to see if it would do anything, and it didn't. It just made it a simpler gloss. You can actually see that transition. It's not super exciting, and this one's signed proper, so that's how I often sign them. It would be gorgeous on a sink. That Muddy Waters, yes. Oh yeah, that would be nice. So the desert desk is nice. I did more with this though, wait, we got better ones. This was just a quick um, test. Now, we've got this one, and woo! <laughs> There's some crazy stuff happening on this bowl. This one is, let's see, this is desert desk. Desert desk with speckled toad. Speckled toad on the rim and on the outside, and it ran a bit. Speckled toad's okay. I, I need to play with it a little bit more. It's not as awesome as Muddy Waters, I will tell you that. I love that. Love that Muddy Waters. And the Desert Dusk, I wish I'd done heavier because there's some gorgeous crystals and little spots in there. So that's a one to play more with, right? More tests? Okay. Let's do the mugses, because there is some great stuff. This is one, oh my goodness me. Ah, this is called Night Moth. And inside is Clayscapes Pottery Pitch Black. Remember, I dipped and poured that. I did this on the live broadcast. And then three coats of the Night Moth. Ah, ah, do you see what I'm seeing? Wow. Wowzer. Um, mm, ooh, yeah, that's good. Nice. So this is Mako stoneware. It comes in that new 2020 stoneware kit. Beautiful. Um, almost like a leopard spot chino, but with blacks and greens and blues. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Kind of like a kind of space galaxy cratery thing going on but it's pretty nice, right? Night Moth for the win! Yes. So that's it. That's all. Night Moth is the only glaze on here. Not another one. So if you're wondering what I put over it, nothing. It's just the Night Moth. That is all. And that's all you need. 
Okay, now we're going to get into some crazy, I love this. Oh, I love this one. I love pink and purples and everything like that. So this was a little craziness. This is raspberry mist, three coats on the bottom. Uh, I would say two thirds of the mug right here. And then I did blue hydrangea on the top two thirds. So raspberry mist I glazed till here. Um, oh, and inside is my cobblestone as a liner, just a simple gray. So we've got blue hydrangea to here. We've got, I mean, raspberry mist to here, right? Raspberry mist. And then the rim and two thirds the way down I glazed with blue hydrangea. Ah. And then the very, very, very top, I did a coat of the light flux. Oh, the light flux, uh, the light flux, a very heavy coat. I know this one, nice, right? That's so nice. I think my youngest daughter will steal this. <laughs> my husband's nodding. Kevin's nodding. He's like, oh, that's gone. That's so gone. Like, <laughs> that's already out of here. I know. This, this is the problem when you teach your children to appreciate pottery. They come out after you have a kiln opening and steal everything. Uh, it, yeah. So let's just step to the side from Mako for a minute and look at some clayscapes glazes. I got a piece in here. This is my spearmint on the inside, which you can currently get from Clayscapes Pottery. And then on the outside is my cobblestone, which is a yummy warm gray, which will be coming in May. And I glazed the whole outside um, with the cobblestone and then I dipped it in the spearmint. So you've got that nice yummy transition. Look at that. That's nice. No, you can't have it. He's trying to take this. <laughs> This is what happens when you're a potter. People in your family who live with you will come and steal all your pots before you can sell them to people. I have over a hundred mugs in my house. It's insane. I have got so many cabinets full of mugs. I have so many hanging on the wall. I have a mug. I have a mug wall as a matter of fact. I've got hooks everywhere. It's crazy. Oh, and yum. Oh, I think this is okay cobblestone on the inside desert dusk on the outside is it just desert dusk let's see yes it is just mako desert dusk right here the cobblestone is a satin yes my cobblestone glaze is a satin and it's food safe so this is desert dusk by itself one coat top to bottom second coat three quarters of the way down, third coat halfway down, because it does run. You see all those runners? Do you see all that happening? Mmm. And then uh, just that, that's it. Nope. No, I put light flux on the very top. One coat of light flux on the tippity top. Oh, oh my gosh. This is like the yummiest coffee cup. Mm-hmm. I've shown my mug wall. I see a bunch of people wanting to, um, Go check out my posts on Instagram. Check out my posts on Facebook. I've shared the mug wall quite a few times. And one of these days, I should do a broadcast from the mug wall. And I could pull all the mugs down and share them. I have mugs I paid over $300 for. Oh, yeah. Sometimes an artist will do a limited edition run of mugs. And they'll be like 10. And then they don't ever do another run. And I managed to sneak in there and, and grab one. So I've, I've got mugs that are crazy expensive. But then I've got mugs that are $25 up there because they're beautiful. So it's not the price. It's just whether it speaks to you when you collect. Okay, Desert Dusk. Yummy. Wow. Mm. Mm-hmm. That, that, oh, oh, wait. Hello. Amico and Mako can be friends. Amico and Mako can hang out together. Look how nice. I would like to have some pancakes and sausage with a yummy cup of coffee. How nice would this be for our breakfast, right? They would look so good together. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, you know, Mako and Amico are friends. Let's keep going. Uh, this, oh, this one I, okay, another really yummy one right here. Oh, 
Oh, thanks guys. I'm glad you're loving these mugs. So this right here is the Mako Coral Sands three coat, three coats as the base. And that is on the entire thing, top to bottom. So three coats of Coral Sands top to bottom. Then I did, what do you think I did? I did Desert Dusk, right? Or did I do Stoneware? Hold on, got to find it. Do, 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 muddy coral sand, sandstone, three coats of sandstone on the top, but one coat two thirds of the way down and the other two coats more towards the top. Then a coat of the light flux on the rim. I know, yum, yummy, yum, 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 yum. And my cobblestone on the inside where, oh, I don't know if the camera can pick that up. You see how that ran down inside on top of my cobblestone? Oh my gosh! The desert dusk, no this is sandstone. Sandstone on top of cobblestone I think would be a crazy good combo. Got almost a drip. Almost, not quite. It is yummy. Yes. Wow. Um, so. I haven't been able to sleep for two nights because I figured all these were going to run like crazy and stick to my kiln shelves. That I was going to have them fused, I was going to try to pull them up and it would break the mug. But so far none of them have stuck except the Amico, which I didn't think would stick at all. Go figure. Ooh, ooh, yummy. This is a very, very unexpected dark and toasty sort of mug. And I see some questions about the Flux. So Mako makes two glazes called Flux. They have a light version, which is more of a white or a cream, and then they have a dark version, which is more of a gray and, or a charcoal. And what they do is they're a glaze that just makes everything else run. It helps make everything flow and flux. Flux is a thing that helps your glazes melt. So Mako just made them up that, made up these glazes that they're calling their Flux. Now this one right here is muddy waters, but I was afraid it would run a lot. So I only put one coat of muddy waters to the bottom, a second coat halfway down, a third coat just on the rim, and then dark flux on the rim. So I put a coat of the dark flux and you can see we've got some serious melty yumminess. And then that is my, my cobblestone on the inside that the dark flux and this, the muddy waters look really good over. I'm gonna have to do some combos, right? I need a kiln wash assistant. I didn't have anything stick, Peggy. No, only that one shelf, that was it. So it was not even a problem. None of these, none of these stuck. You can see the bottoms are perfect. Not, not anything on my shelf, nothing. So I won't have to do any cleanup except one, one shelf. Although I'm about to pull out my next layer and who knows what's down there, right? I could, I could have terrible things, but I doubt it, but you never know, right? All right, let's pull out the next layer. How many layers we got in here? Mm -hmm, more tests. Ooh. All right, so let's do these two little plates quickly. This was one that I did on the live, on the ClayshareCon. So we did this one during ClayshareCon. It was one that I dipped and I was showing you all how to dip and pour. So what I did is I dipped the entire plate into my cobblestone, that's that gray, and then I dipped a little bit on the sides into my spearmint right there. So we get this beautiful pattern with a little stripe of gray in the middle, but melt, very nice melt here. If I say so myself, you will notice there is not a single pinhole in, in sight, no crawling, no crazing, no glaze imperfections at all. Food safe, smooth as can be, about as perfect as you get for glaze results. Um, you know, so yay me, right? <laughs> And that's because sometimes, you know, pinholes happen, crawling, crazing happens. You never know, but um, they, they turned out fabulous. So, all right, 
wanted to see what raspberry mist does on texture. So this is my little mushroom plate using my mushroom rolling pin. Raspberry mist, the entire thing, front and back. Then on top, I put dark flux on the rim. And the dark flux has a little bit of purpley lavender-ish going on in there. You can kind of see that, that tonal change. Nice, right? And it's funny because the center, the raspberry mist, has similar tones with the dark flux. So it's just a nice way to finish the rim of a plate, to give it a little more presence, maybe. Nice. Right? Yeah, that desert dusk is like a butterscotch, right? And I will show a couple at the end again because I think there's two very similar, but they have different, one's desert dusk, one's sandstone. I will show you those. So let's pull out the last half shelf and then we'll remove everything on the bottom. Let me do that right now. Put those in there. All right, I'm gonna pull this one out. And there's one more plate that, that I did that bamboo brush work with. So you can see what we got going on in here. We got the cone pack to grab out. Got some Georgies in the very bottom. We got that vintage gold, which I'm really excited to see. And so let's pull them out and let's look at them. Where do we start? Let's start with this bowl right here. So Georgies. This is their Indigo Interactive Pigment. Oh my gosh, it turned out so, so cute with their Super Clear on top. So that's what you're seeing right there. It turned out so cute. Uh, the Super Clear gives a little greenish to it. Um, some gray tones, the blue, very nice, right? And the Super Clear does have zinc in it. So you get a different result than you would if you use their Zinc Free Clear. I uh, see a question about the raspberry mist. It's a semi-translucent glaze, but not really. It just breaks over the texture so you can still see the pattern. It's, it's actually not considered a translucent glaze at all. It's considered an opaque, but sometimes with opaque glazes, if you don't put them on too thick, you can still see your texture. Here's the other one I glazed during Clay Share Con, and it's the one I did the brushwork with. Again, this was, a, this was a pouring, so, oh, you can see it's shimmer, just barely. It's a subtle hint of it. Um, this is when we did the pouring, and we poured the inside, and then I brushed spearmint, so it's my cobblestone, and then I brushed the spearmint, and then I did some brush work to do a little bit of bamboo, and the spearmint didn't really show, but you have a ghost image. It's kind of nice. You see it? Sort of a metallic-y... Ghost image? Hmm. So that's not bad. I'm not unhappy with that at all. It's still pretty. All right. A couple more things. We have coaster. We glazed these during Clay Share Con on the day that I did the Georgie's demo. Autumn foliage with eggshell wash right here and here. So that's both. Nice way to highlight texture, always looks good for leaves. Everything turns out so good with these. They really do. So eggshell wash on top of autumn foliage pigment. That's what, what these are right there. They're all, they always come out nice. This is a maple leaf from a tree that is right there. It's just over there. And in the fall, I will collect the leaves and put them in clay and make pots because I live in Vermont. <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> uh, right? Uh, all right, and really the last thing, oh, well, let's do the cone pack before the last piece. We gotta make you wait. You gotta, you gotta have your, we gotta have study time, right? Here is the top cone pack. Nice five melted, four completely down, of course, six starting to bend. Here's the bottom, five nice melted, four down, six, just starting to bend. I would safely say, look at that, dead on. They are about the same. Um, actually, when I fired it, I took a screenshot and they were only like one degree apart when the kiln shut off. So that's pretty accurate. 
That's what you want. We'll stick those over there. Now, the very last piece. Oh, it's stuck. That's the new. Oh, it totally stuck to my big shelf on the. Oh, oh, it really stuck. So that's the new vintage gold from Amico. Surprisingly enough, the Mako glazes didn't run and stick, but the new Amico did. Oops. So it's fused to not just a half shelf. It's actually fused to my brand new whole shelf on the bottom. That I have only fired a few times, so I've only put one coat of kiln wash on it. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so let's see if we can even get it out. Let's take the posts, because we might have to take the shelf out with it stuck to the shelf. Um, so this is a lesson, kids. Make sure you kiln wash your shelves really well, because learn from my example and do as I say, not as I do. Oh my goodness. It happens. It totally happens. So I got a little magnet that I did as a test. This was for the Clay uh, Con West conference back in, in January. Okay. Hmm. I'm just going to give it a good tug. We're going to see what happens. Oh my gosh. Oh no. Well, guys, this is real life. This is real studio stuff. I'm going to pull the whole shelf out. There's no way around it. So um, I'll try not to fall into my kiln while doing this. My goodness. Yes, my feet come off of the ground when I lift my big shelf up. Look at this. <laughs> we can talk about the glaze, though. Look, it's beautiful. <laughs> and it looks great. Um, you don't really see your texture so much, just so you know. And it's completely stuck on there. <laughs> well, I'll be taking this outside, and I did four coats. I did. I did four coats of the vintage gold because I was concerned I didn't put enough on. <laughs> so this is how it goes, right? Um, stuff runs, stuff sticks. It's just how it is. So um, I will take this outside, and I'll probably, well... Let's see, hold on. I might be able to nudge it off with a little, where's that rubber mallet? That's okay. Some people always ask why I keep a rubber mallet in the studio. The ugly side, right? I've got this. I'm expecting to break my cute little butterfly planter. I really am, but, which makes me really sad. Got it off. Not so bad. Not, not so bad at all. I've had worse, believe me. Uh, yeah, but look, the color's gorgeous. Here's the thing. You barely see what the texture was. You know there was texture there. Uh, I don't know. I'm actually seeing it. Um, this will need a little bit of grinding. My poor shelf will need a bit of grinding. So look at me talking about how things didn't really run. And then uh, look what I got, right? Serves me right. Don't brag. You'll get shot down if you do, right? So that's the vintage gold. It is not food safe. It's not food safe. Do not put it on the inside of your pots. Do not put it on the rim of cups. Put it below the rim. You can put it on the outside. Just do not put it on the rim. Put something else on the rim. So the butterfly planter um, lives. And I'm going to put succulents in it. I think it'll be gorgeous. I really do. And the inside is, hold on, I'm going to grab my notebook. The butterfly planter, the inside is, what did I put on the inside of that? Oh, that's the... That's the blue stone. This is blue stone on the inside, two coats, and vintage gold. So the blue stone almost has a copper patina finish, and the vintage gold has that bright, shiny uh, gold, but it's not a bright gold. It's like a coppery gold. It's really pretty. It turned out well. You love it when the texture is subtle. Well, you get it with this, and you can put it on a mug. Just don't put it on your rim because, you know, that's not where the food's safe. 
happens. All right, uh, two things I want to show you to clarify because I saw some questions about what glazes were what. These two mugs, very similar, right? The difference being this is Desert Dusk, the new Desert Dusk, three coats, right? And on the rim, let me just double check, is it just Desert Dusk with light flux? So Desert duck, Dust with light flux on the rim. Now this one, Coral Sands, is the first glaze I applied. Then two to three coats of the sandstone with the light flux on the rim. So that's these two. And the blue stone glaze is a matte? Yes, it is. And they say it's kind of a satin. It's a sa I would say it's a satin matte, not a dry matte, though. You can run your fingers on it, and it, it doesn't feel dry. And it is food safe. So that's the difference. The sandstone has little black specks. The Desert Dusk just has yummy, butterscotchy, warm, gooey, hot buttered rum, toffee, numminess with whipped cream on top. So take your pick. It looks like your Chino with a yellow over. They, they, so this is just one glaze with the light flux to get this. So these mugs were like some of my favorite things. Although, what was my favorite thing in this whole entire kiln? Yeah. Well, the Night Moth mug kind of blew me away. I'm grabbing my favorites. The Night Moth mug? I, I am kind of shocked by that. That's beautiful. Um, but this, this combo right here, which is the Raspberry Mist, Blue Hydrangea, and Light Flux. This combo, I think, is the winner for me. This is the mug that if I came in and I... If I came into someone's studio and all these mugs were lined up like they are back there and I could buy one, this is the one I'd pick up right here. So that's why I think my daughter would steal it from me because that's how she rolls, right? <laughs> all right, so that's the kiln opening today. Awesome stuff. Um, I will be posting pictures of stuff as the week progresses to share with you all. Definitely got some great mug shop Monday options, right? So here we have it, yay! All right, everyone, I hope you have a fabulous Sunday. I've got a couple shelves to grind. Thank you for spending your time with me. Stay safe, everyone. You know, just hold your loved ones close. Stay safe. We're gonna get through everything together. I know things are a little uncertain right now, but we're just gonna keep popping on and doing these live broadcasts, keep supporting each other. I love seeing your own kiln openings. I love seeing your studios. I love seeing what you all share, so please do that. And everyone else, I will catch you later. I'll be live Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which is, I believe, negative 4 GMT, right? I think we are, minus 4 GMT. So those of you who are international that asked. The Muddy Waters Bowl. Jane, you're right. That was gorgeous, too. Let me get that before I sign off. Let me quickly show that. That was a surprise as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good, too. That. Yeah. That's pretty awesome. Okay. So lots of good stuff, lots of yummy pots. You know, maybe not everything's your cup of tea, but maybe it's your bowl of cereal. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. All right. Bye, everyone. I'll catch y'all later. <laughs> Bye.